I need an intro. Just start the damn video! What's going on, guys? Uh, the Genshiken, my personal Genshiken, is still under construction. I know I said that a while back, but my job has put me back on a 60-hour work week, at the very least, and, uh... Quite frankly, I haven't had time to do much. I got the shelves up. I got a couple of the things put in order. I built three or four of the sections, like the Wonder Woman section. I'm building a Ninja Turtles area and things like that. But as it stands right now, there's no way I could be up in that room. So, most of these videos, when I have time to do them, mind you, are going to be done here And I know that people have been looking forward to me bringing Keeping Up With The X-Men back, and it's coming back. But for right now, I gotta focus on what I can do in my free time, and for right now, that's gonna be some of these old subject videos. So right now, today, I need to talk about the Switch, because I love the Nintendo Switch so much, and every single other day, it becomes more and more apparent that I love the Switch too much. So these are just 10 reasons why the Switch might possibly be my favorite system. Number one, portability. The first thing is honestly the most simple part of this entire thing. The Switch is portable. And as I've grown older, as well, as you can tell, as I've grown older and become old Bill Logan, I have come to figure out that my gaming life has to change. It's no longer the same situation that it used to be where I could sit in front of this old TV and play old Nintendo and Super Nintendo games and so on and so forth. Like currently I'm doing a run through of Chrono Trigger, which is great, but I have to be sitting at home with free time to do that. And between getting stickers for your car and fixing this and setting up patio furniture for the outside and building the grill and making this and fixing the Genshiken and every single thing, that comes up in our adult life, it could be very difficult, if not impossible, to game. But the Switch is portable, and you lose nothing, absolutely nothing, in the experience. I can't believe that I live in a time where I can take Skyrim with me to get my oil changed. I could play Mario Kart at Buffalo Wild Wings, I'm uh, not plugging, but I could play the Switch anywhere I go to eat, that just happens to be where I always eat, and I can go to one of their tables, and instead of asking for their stupid little tablet thing they bring over with generic games, I could play Mario Kart with my kid, or if I happen to be by myself, I could play one of the RPGs, like I Am Setsuna. That is a huge huge deal, and the portability alone makes this one of the greatest systems that I've ever owned in my entire life, because it's not the same idea as the Game Boy, where you go and you play it, and then you come home, and you might need a Super Game Boy to play it. You just put it back on the dock, and you lose absolutely nothing. It's not the same thing as the, it's not the, same thing as the Vita, where you play the games for a while, and then you upload the save to the cloud or you transfer it when you get home and then you keep playing it and you had to buy two copies of the game. In order to play certain games, I had to buy two copies, one for the PlayStation and one for the Vita. And then, of course, you could remote play and things like that, but it's just not the same. The Switch is truly portable. It is superior in every single aspect of that design. It is quite possibly the greatest portable system ever created, period, and yet it's a home console. That easily puts it into one of my all-time favorite categories. Number two, the games. How could we possibly overlook, when talking about the quality of a system, the games, the library, the very bread and butter that makes up the whole frickin' reason that we buy a system, coming to the Switch, 
was me coming back to Nintendo. Now keep in mind, I fell out of Nintendo on PlayStation 1. I did not play N64. I have one now. And I even have a couple games. But I left during Super Nintendo. I did not have a GameCube until later. I did not have a Wii until later. I had a Wii U, but the system flopped. And though I'm going to make another video talking about my thoughts on what happened there, that is a completely different situation all entirely. And coming back did not feel the same as when I came back to Nintendo on the Switch. This was my true re-entry into Nintendo. This was the first time I picked up a Mario game and played it again for the first time. Everything else, like even on the Wii U, I picked up the Mario game like almost two years after it was done. This is what I'm talking about. I came back to Mario, and it felt like a new Mario 64. It's just, it's tremendous. Odyssey is so good. It's so fun. I love the little aspects where you go inside the wall and it caters all the way back to the original Mario game. And I love the aspect that it feels like Mario 64, quite frankly, a game that I missed out on. But when I did get to play it, I did see its merit and I see it even more here. An absolute instant classic. And from that, we go over to Mario Kart. Mario Kart, whoo, that is good. That is easily, in my opinion, guys, that is the best Mario Kart that has ever been made. There's a new Smash coming out. Zelda went back to basics. This is it, guys. The new Zelda Breath of the Wild took us back to the original idea. This is Zelda as it used to be. The game just starts. Here's the world. Good luck. Look around. Find what you need to find. Do what you need to do. And do it when you want to do it. In the original Zelda, you could go through and you could beat the entire game out of order. You could... I've heard about craziness where people just go get the shield and beat the entire game somehow. I have no idea how they do that. I can't do that. But just... Wow! And that is something that you can do. You can, break, you can play Breath of the Wild... For years, you could play it for a couple days and beat the game. It is insane the amount of depth and world that there really is to explore. It has fantastic ports like Skyrim. That blew me away that you could take that thing with you. And this is something that I think is important to think about when you talk about games for the Switch. So far, every game I've tried seems to work and work well. And whether they be a port or an older game or not, these are still games that you never expected to play outside. I can go anywhere I want to go and play Skyrim and play L.A. Noir. It's just, it's mind-blowing. The games are so good for the Switch. And I just picked up Hyrule Warriors, and before that I was playing the new Fire Emblem Warriors. And that game is tremendous. And, the, oh man, there's just one thing after another that coming back to Nintendo has reminded me of certain aspects of gaming that I have left behind. And not to say that PlayStation and things like that are not important because, well, as you know, especially on this channel, I stream a lot of PlayStation and talk about what I'm playing and so on and so forth. But this time, Nintendo has also felt like it went back to the original Nintendo, where there are games for kids, but there are games for adults, and there are games for fun, and there are games for serious. And that is a big deal because it not only makes the gaming library vast and expansive from everything to the Mario Odyssey to the Resident Evil Revelations 2, so good. I don't care. It's so good. Especially when I could take it anywhere and I don't have the system crash. That happens on the PlayStation 4 when you're playing when you're playing a whole lot of uh, uh, Resident Evil Revelations 2, it crashes for some reason, and that's, that's just ridiculous. But we have a lot more to talk about, so let's move on. Number three, no trophies or achievements. Remember a time when we used to play games because games were fun? It's a foreign concept nowadays. Kind of crazy. But 
you get stuck in this mentality of trophies and achievements. And one of the things that coming to the Switch has done for me is take me away from that. When I play the Switch, I'm not worried about getting a trophy. I'm worried about playing the game. I focus on the game. What is important to me? What do I want to do? What do I want to accomplish? How much do I want to play? Do I want to play Street Fighter 2 HD because it's fun? Yes! That's all I ever wanted to do was play games because they were fun. And there was something about the trophy and achievement system. Love it or hate it, it's, your, it's up to you. And if it's something that's giving your guys' gaming more meaning, then that's fine. But for me, gaming was always about the enjoyment. I never played Final Fantasy VI and said, maybe I should get to level 99 because that's an achievement. I did it because I felt like I wanted to at least one run through. I never played games and thought I need to get this character or win every single round flawless victory because it's an achievement or play with this guy or unlock all these story modes. I played the game the way I wanted to for as long as I wanted to, how I wanted to, why I wanted to. And that is an aspect that I feel has been lost in a world of trophies. I hear all the time about people, including myself, that will say things like, I'm so close to getting that platinum or something like that. And then I figure out that all I'm doing is working. And I, I get enough work, okay? Way more than enough work. I don't need my gaming to be work. I don't need to drive towards a goal with gaming. I need to play a game. That was the whole point of the entire thing when I got into it was for fun. And then it became a passion. And a passion turned into... Fandom Night, and then Fandom Night expanded that understanding of where these things came from, and I learned about them, and I loved things like G4 TV, Tech TV, because I was into gaming because it was so great. It's fun and creative and expansive, and it tells great stories, and it opens up our imaginations, and it just allows us to pass time in a positive and powerful way. And then everything became trophies and achievements. And I would play the game for what I wanted. And then all of a sudden there would be all these things that I like had to do. And I get the idea that you don't have to do them. But then you feel like you're comparing yourself to every other person when they have more achievements than you. And they've done better at this game than you have. And they've done this and you couldn't do that. And who cares? And you know what? On the Switch, I don't have to worry about that. Number four, self-promotion. What do I mean by self-promotion? Well, there's an aspect on the Nintendo Switch which I love a lot, and that's channels. When you get on, there's a news feed, and you can design this news feed to be everything you want it to be. You can watch the Nintendo Directs. Absolutely fabulous idea, because quite frankly, I feel like E3 has become a little overstated nowadays, and it's not really necessary the way it used to be. And Nintendo Direct helps to prove something like that. With Nintendo Direct, I could just get onto the Switch every week or morning, and I could click on it, and the games that I'm interested, the news I'm interested, the channels I've selected will tell me what's coming up. It's like having a magazine that's delivered to your house every single day, digitally. And it's awesome. It really is. There's articles, there's videos, there's news interviews, there's talk with cast and crew, music background, all kinds of awesome stuff. And I could discover things through it that I wouldn't have discovered otherwise. Case in point, there's a new Square Enix game that I cannot wait for. It's this game called Octopath. And I discovered it by accident simply because I was updating my news feed on my Switch and I happened to click on a couple of games that interested me and one of the articles led me to something by Square Enix News, which was a new game, which I now cannot wait for. And this is self-promotion done right. It's not throwing it in my face. It only tells me what I want it to tell me. And only when I tell it to tell me. If I don't ever want to hear a single word for the rest of my life on Mario Odyssey, I simply turn that channel off 
and it's done. Every now and then it will suggest one or two channels that it thinks I might like, but I never have to touch the button ever. And if I tell it not to tell me about news for a new game because I simply don't care, then that's the end of it. The online Nintendo-esque magazine for the Switch is built by you, and therefore it is always enjoyable because it's always what you cared about. Number five. Case size. This one might seem a little trivial, but I really do think it's kind of a big deal. Case size. This is seven games. That's pretty simple. I hold it right in my hand. They're pretty small, but they still look like any other game. The case is just what it needs to be. There it is, there it is, there it is. That's fine. There doesn't need to be anything more than that, right? Sure, we could make the argument that the games are super small and everything, but that's not really what I'm talking about here. I'm literally talking about the case size because seven games on another system, and I'll keep it, I'll keep it as simple as I can. These are seven games on the PlayStation 4. And I believe that these cases are small and convenient as well, but there is a huge difference between them. In fact, seven games on the Switch and seven games on the PlayStation take us... There are two full games here. Seven, seven. That takes a lot less space on my shelf, and for a person like me who collects physical copies, that's kind of a big deal. And really, these cases are fine. They seem just as tough and just as adequate as these cases, except for the fact that these cases are huge by comparison. And not that these cases are big, but let's be honest here, for a guy that enjoys physical media, I only have so much space. I dropped all my cases. But they do take up less space. Number six, the controller. Another thing to talk about when you talk about any system whatsoever, and it's the most important aspect, probably even more important than the games, is the controller. And the Switch nailed it here. This right here is going to work for shooters. It has a bit of a knockoff design from the Xbox, but it's square. It does actually feel comfortable in my hands. I like just how big the controller is. It feels comfortable. It feels like it works, and it comes with multiple, multiple options in the same controller. That is a big deal because not everybody plays the same way. I like to play this way. This is me. This is a controller. This is how I'm comfortable, but my daughter does not feel that way. My daughter likes to play like this. This is where she's comfortable. She likes to move around. She likes to play. And that's a big deal. But at the same time, I can play anywhere I go simply by turning these sideways. And you wouldn't think that this would be very comfortable, but believe it or not, it is. It does work, and it works well. Surprisingly, in fact, it turns us back to the original Nintendo controller when you just simply turn them on their side and play. And if this really is too small, there's an extender, which comes with every single one of these little controllers, or at least did when I was buying them. I've noticed that now you have to buy the little extenders. But regardless, you can get those things. You could buy this, you could buy these, you could buy the extenders, and... One more little kick to why I like these controllers. They don't cost the price of a freaking game. Right now, to buy a controller on the PlayStation, it costs me like $60 to $70. And it's the same thing with the Xbox, and that drives me crazy. I can get a new game, or I can get another controller. That is nauseating.
because I have to have a second controller in case somebody comes over to my house or they have to bring theirs. But with the Switch, I didn't have to do that. I bought the Switch. It came with two controllers, or one controller, or one fancy... I almost dropped that. Man, what is going on with me today? Or one fancy, swingy, jiggy controller. Either way, there are multiple ways to play with just one controller. And there are different kinds of controllers. And that actually leads me to another point about the Switch that I really like. Number seven, customization. One of the things I like is making something my own, and I could do that with the Switch. As simple as the controller. This was the Switch called controller I bought. When I bought the Switch, I got this one. Then I wanted a gray, so I bought the gray ones. But say I wanted watermelon color. That exists. I say I wanted red, yellow, green, blue. Those exist. There are stickers for the controllers, just like every other system, but the controllers are so small that the stickers just seem a little more manageable. And there are also other controllers. There are controllers that look like the Pro Controller. There are controllers that look like the GameCube controllers, and they all work on the Switch. This gives you multiple options to play on the Switch with different controllers that fit your liking. So one way or another, even if you despise the controls that they came with, you will find a controller that fits you and works, and you will not be paying an arm and a leg to do so. Number eight, the size of the games. This goes back to what I was talking about with portability. It may not sound like a big deal, and it may also sound like I'm fishing for things to talk about here, but I gotta be honest here. I'm holding 10 games. 10 games. I could put, with these cases, I could fit about five of these in my pocket. That's crazy. It's crazy because I come from a time when I remember the Game Boy. I come from a time when I remember the PSP. I remember the Vita. And one of the things I praised the Vita for was being able to carry around 8 to 10 games comfortably. And you know what? Same with the Switch. These games are small. So you could make the argument that losing them is easy. And yes, it probably is. I got to admit that if I dropped this somewhere, I'd be pretty mad that I just lost four games. But that comes down to adult responsibilities. Watch your stuff. Know what you are doing. It is not anybody else's responsibility to take care of your stuff. They offered you a deal here. The games are small, they're portable, you can get these red cases for them, and you could take them with you. And that brings me to my next point. Number nine, traveling. Traveling is one of those things that you have to understand where I'm coming from. When I was growing up, I remember what it was like to say, hey, do you guys want to hang out for the night? And then we would pick a house that we were going to stay at. Me and my friends were always back and forth. We either stayed at my buddy's house up the hill, or we stayed at my house. If we would either play in the basement, or we would play in the attic. I had an attic room. Or we would play down in his basement. That's where his room was. And figuring out, or, or my buddy across the street from him, we would go upstairs into his upstairs room. Regardless of where we went, there was always one major problem, one obstacle that was in our way. We gotta take it. It's gotta go somewhere. I have a PlayStation 2. He has an Xbox. We could go play Xbox all night, but what if we want to play the PlayStation 2? What if there's a specific game, but we really feel like hanging out at his place because for whatever reason, maybe my parents had a party or something going on? Well, this was a bit of an issue. It was tough to transport these things sometimes. I had a giant backpack that I would put the PlayStation in, then I would put like 10 or 12 games in there, then I would carry the two or four controllers and the multi-tap. It was a serious pain. 
but the switch that's it that's it this is a pretty easy carrying case it doesn't cost too much money it is nintendo specific and look at this inside this case the switch goes here that's my playstation vita that's my 3ds this is a bag of 3ds games that is my controller for the switch right there these are switch games in the side the other joy cons right here go here and underneath these two things are the extenders and the stuff for the headphones and all of that space Right back here behind the controller, you could put the cord, just start it here and wrap it around, and that's the cord you need for charging. Close it, zip it. And believe it or not, all of that stuff fits comfortably in here. It doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't rattle. It doesn't give me trouble. I literally hold it right here, and I take it anywhere I need to go, and I actually do this. Sometimes I don't know exactly how long I'm going to be gone. If I'm going to my sister-in-law's, I have no idea how, I'm going to, how long I'm going to be there. And I'd like something to do in case they end up watching Christmas movies or something like that. That's not really me. I just don't care. So, and I'm not a humbug. It's just, it, you, you get the idea. Now my phone is going off. Let me correct that incident real quick. But you get the idea. I like the fact that I could take the console, four controllers, two other consoles, a set of games, nearly 12 to 15 games for the Switch, 20-something games for the 3DS, plus my 3DS, plus my Vita carrying 10 games, four controllers, headphones, oh my god, can you imagine carrying all that in the original Nintendo era, trying to put all of that into a bag and go to your buddy's house? Now I realize that times have changed, but let's take it up a notch then. Let's play modern times. Take your Xbox to your buddy's house with all the stuff I just mentioned. What's your carrying case look like? Take your PlayStation 4 to your buddy's house with all the stuff I just mentioned. What's your carrying case look like? It's a solid pain. And when you take the Switch, you don't necessarily have to take everything with you. I don't need the dock. We can play the Switch on the Switch. Crazy. I know. Number 10, fun. Last of all, most of all, most extremely important, and most situation that I've forgotten over the years. Fun. Fun. It's not that the other systems aren't fun, but there is a sense of wonder and fun that comes with the Switch that I have not experienced in years. It's hard to explain. But gaming became something serious around PlayStation 3. And it lost a little bit of its wonder. And I don't know why. I don't know if it was just the attitude of the era or the way PlayStation 3 presented itself. And while I'll admit there are definitely some games that I'm missing out on with the Switch, I wish they had some better RPG options. I'm not going to lie about that. I'm the kind of guy that likes JRPGs, and right now there's not a lot of choices on the Switch. And I really wish that we could have got the actual Nintendo, Super Nintendo, N64, the, the virtual... The virtual console should have been put on the Switch. That's just what that's all there is to it. But now you have the Nintendo online system that's coming out, which hopes to correct some of that and everything. But truly and honestly, there is a sense of wonder and fun when I turn on the Switch that I simply don't get from the other systems. And I'm not sure why that is. It's something that I can't necessarily explain, but it's there. It really truly is there, guys. When I turn on the Switch, I don't have any desire to complete something. I don't have any desire to get a trophy or wonder what I'm going to play. I just put in a game and I enjoy myself. And that's really rare nowadays because I'm very busy. I have, I have Keeping Up With The X-Men. I have a ton of books to read. 
I have my show that I do here. I have the streaming. I have the fans. I have constant letters that I have to write. I have the house. Uh, excuse me. I have putting together the Genshikin up there. I'm building things out in my backyard. I'm mowing. I'm doing the adult life. There's a lot that goes into having a home and doing certain things that I didn't have to deal with before. And I also have a six-year-old daughter. And that changed some of my aspects on gaming. And it made gaming on a television, on a couch, a lot more difficult. And maybe it's nothing more than that. But I have a Vita. So why is that not my favorite system? And it does come down to fun. I've had a lot of fun with my Vita, but not like I've had with the Switch. There's something about going somewhere. I can go to the mall, walk around, do my shopping, hang out, and then go up to the food court, set up the Switch in one of the corners of the food court, and play Street Fighter II with me and six of my friends passing the controller for four hours while we just hang out and eat pizza and play Switch. I, I can't explain that to you any more than what I just did. The Switch has changed gaming for me and probably hundreds of other people. And it's going to be tough to tell myself that I have to sit here and finish this game. Because I don't. I can go anywhere I want to go. And I can sleep mode the Switch at any time. I don't have to worry about pausing the game. I can pick it up whenever I want to. I can put it down whenever I want to. Fun is when I choose fun. When I have time for fun, when I'm outside on my patio set, I could just play games. And I could do them with multiple people. There's a wonder that came with the Switch that I have not experienced since I was a child. And I think the fact that the Switch was able to bring me back to that feeling is why right now, the Switch is honestly my favorite system. Reploid Bill, Old Bill Logan, I'll be back with more to talk about. I have spoken. Take what you will from it. <laughs>